Well, hello, I'm Ron Penn. I'm the founding director of the John Jacob Niles Center for American Music, and I'm a professor emeritus of the School of Music at the University of Kentucky. I'm here today to talk about this wonderful place on Boone Creek in Clark County, Kentucky. And this house is an extraordinary place. It's uh, one that the Bluegrass Trust realized was worth a visit on the detour. And so here we are today at Boot Hill Farm. John Jacob Niles was born outside of Louisville in 1892 and died in 1980. During that lifetime, he had an extraordinary career collecting traditional music in the hills of East Kentucky when he was working for the Burroughs Adding Machine Company. He started collecting that music and transcribing it. His mother taught him how to notate that music. And he got some of his earliest songs that he recorded, like Go Away From My Window, I Wonder As I Wander, and Jesus, Jesus, Rest Your Head, based on little fragments of folk music that he collected. And then he wrote completely new settings of them, added melodies, transformed it, added verses. So the same way he took the simple dulcimer he found and turned it into his own instruments, he did the same thing with the musical material. It carried him a long way. He traveled all over the world with this music, performing in the White House, performing at the first Newport Folk Festival, being the first folk musician to perform at Carnegie Hall. Niles took his music all over the world, created several books and publications. Uh, the ballad book of John Jacob Niles took the career of all those ballads and his comments about the people from whom he collected. And so the legacy of Niles is one of great American virtue, taking what was closest at hand that springs from the soil and bringing it to the whole world through his performances. He needed a place of repose to refresh himself, and Boot Hill provided that place for him. Well, in 1937 and 38, John Jacob Niles was traveling all over this area looking for property to live in. He decided, uh, after leaving North Carolina, that this would be a good place to be, Boone Creek area. He came here July 24th, 1938 and found this place and was so excited he wrote his wife about the trip that he made with the real estate agent and said, this is it, this is it. Finally, I heard there was a spring here and there's enough rock around here to build the Empire State Building. And so rock there is all around us here, rock walls lining the whole drive. And he did a number of projects with uh, the Snowdens who were a family, a father and a son that were very good with rock. And also he used the Hicks family to help him build some of the rock walls that we'll see around the house as well. So rock was the essential. It made gardening kind of problematic, but he bought this property with the intent of making it really a self-sufficient farm. And this would be 1938, 39, and we've got World War II when Victory Gardens are coming into being. And John Jacob Niles really had a sense of agriculture having grown up in a farm outside of Louisville as a child. So the building right here, the rock buildings were ones that he constructed uh, during the war uh, about 1940 for this one, and um, that one was about 1943 right next to it. And it shows John Jacob Niles touches, the little bit of grill work set into it, that decorative iron work. Now this one right here was where he smoked his hams. And that was one of the more, more important and wonderful parts of the farm. Uh, he raised his own hogs and then he smoked them and they were delicious. I had the last of them. He would make a big deal of carving them after the blessing at a meal at the house. The uh, 
blessing would last for probably half an hour. He went on at great length, and by that time, the ham was well cured. But this was a smokehouse. There was a roof on it originally, and all that's left are the walls. That one was built at a time during the war when you could not get building materials. Unfortunately, you couldn't get concrete or steel. Wood lumber was hard to come by. So he used a French technique called pisé à terre, which meant uh, rammed earth. And what he did was create these wooden forms, and then he would ram the dirt, the clay, into them and form a wall with it. And then you had to put concrete or plaster on the outside of that, and it would last forever. Unfortunately, it hasn't been plastered over in years, and it's starting to crumble. And you can see into the building there. But it was really a very wonderful space. Helm Roberts, who was an architect, a very well-known one in Kentucky, who did the Vietnam War Memorial in Frankfurt, Helm's wife, Jackie, was a wonderful singer, and John Jake Niles wrote music for Jackie. So Helm and Jackie were frequent guests at Boot Hill. And Helm did the work on this, waterproofing it, drain it, draining it, and made it really tight inside. So John Jacob Niles, in his final years, was writing his autobiography, typing it away at the uh, table in the pony barn there. The one last little bit of John Jacob Niles' life, there is a board that has carved into it, Low Bridge, Everybody Down, from that song, The Erie Canal, because uh, you had to be about four feet tall to enter there without sklonking your head. These are the outbuildings that were important to John Jacob Niles and Rena in their agricultural domestic life. Farming was so important to John Jacob Niles and Rena and they um, worked their property by horses, and then he had a Cub Cadet uh, tractor that he used as well. They had a fine asparagus bed that's still producing. They planted a lot of raspberries. And one of the first things they did when they got to the property is plant 200 trees that are still here. So they were planning for the long haul at this house. Uh, he kept his farm right up that hill there, and. Um, well, the story about the tractor, uh, one day uh, he, was, he got out while it was still running to uh, look at some tobacco plants that he had up there, and all of a sudden the uh, tractor slipped out of gear and ran him over. And John Jacob Nile said, damn, the last thing I saw was Goodyear. <laughs> so uh, he, he did work with his tractor, he worked by hand. And he and his son, Tom, and John Ed, his other son, did a lot of uh, the work here. Eventually, they raised tobacco on the base, uh, such a staple crop of Kentucky. Originally, this whole farm was called Boot Hill by John Jacob. And the reason for that is the shape of the hill, they had a patch of tobacco when he first came here, and it was in the shape of a boot. So it wasn't really Boot Hill like the cemetery that it was named after 33 acres of Boot Hill Farm. When John Jacob and Rena first looked at the property in terms of building the house, they thought they were going to build up on the hill up there where they had a good lookout over Boone Creek and there were several building sites that were possible, but they really eventually settled on coming right back here and nestling it along the creek itself uh, there had been a house that got destroyed by a tornado the year before. It was just a frame house on a little rock uh, foundation there. So they built it right here, and this was one of the wings of the house. Uh, this one came about with the help of the Snowdens, who did the work from rock wall that was uh, right in the area, creek rock and rock from the farm, and they built it themselves. And it was designed to be like the shop. It was called the living room. And it was really where John Jacob Niles held his concerts. Uh, there were salon concerts that people, guests, would come and gather for dinner. And then maybe 15, 20 people would be gathered in this living room uh, while he performed because it had a stage on it. 
Now that stage wasn't what John Jacob would call the stage. It was really because there was a root cellar below, he said. But John Jacob Niles was always a performer and always conscious of the public eye, and he needed a place to perform even in, in his own home. There was a lovely fireplace in the house, uh, in this room that kept things warm. Uh, there were benches along the wall. Uh, it's where he did his composition and where he rehearsed with his performers. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, stained glass window that's still in, in that room, so you have some sense of it there. When you look at the rock walls on the outside, you can see some tiles uh, that were, again, one of those artistic touches that Niles put in his building. It's like the way he took pragmatic items from everyday life that he used and transformed them. The instrument that he played uh, later in his life was the dulcimer, and he inherited the design of the dulcimer, uh, that hourglass shape with the heart-shaped holes, but then he transformed it into his own device. He made his own dulcimers, and he carved down a cello or would use a lute shape, and so he made his own instruments shaped like the idea of a dulcimer but then brought artistry to that craft of woodworking that made it his own. And in the same way, this provided this living room, the space for the family to gather, but it was also a performance space and a compositional space. So it was built by Niles and the father and son of the Snowdens who helped with it. Adjoining it was this little shed that was built earlier. This was really the garage, and it's where they kept the farm machinery. And the back side of it was the spring where they got their water from. So there was a door on the back side that we'll look at later that was the one uh, that was carved um, with a picture, a guy with a picture of water on his shoulder carrying it in other Kentucky symbols like sunflowers and tobacco leaves and that motive. John Jacob Niles and Rena Niles were very, very good hosts. And the Boot Hill was a very popular destination for friends and family. They gathered over meals and music many a time. And they had a number of friends from the neighborhood that, that would join them at the house. Uh, farmers, members of the Iroquois Hunt Club that would come and they would drive up this wonderful driveway with the stone walls and then come to the front door that was right here. That front door was carved by John Jacob Niles and it was uh, in, incised with excerpts about Anglo-Saxon balladry having gone to the four corners of the world from this house. When they came to that house, they would enter that door and that door is now to be found at the John Jacob Niles Center for American Music at the University of Kentucky. A number of the items that were hand carved by Niles are at that, including his own dulcimers, the front door to the home, and about two or three other interior doors. The wonderful dining room table and chairs that were carved by Niles and that were in the dining room wing above there are also in the Niles study room, along with portraits of Niles that were done. So there is a real sense of the interior of the house still very much alive at the University of Kentucky. Well, right now we're in the last part of the house that was built. This was the wing that joined the U-shaped house together. It was built in 1958, and it was the one part of the house that was actually designed by an architect. Uh, this was Ernest Johnson, who was a friend of the Niles's, and he was a very prominent architect in Lexington, having designed uh, campus buildings, the Fine Arts Building, and Memorial Hall on the University of Kentucky campus. It's a wonderful space for dining. Uh, the, chairs and table that John Jacob Niles carved that are now in the Niles Center at the University of Kentucky. Well, rested up here, it was a kind of an elevated platform where he could look out over Boone Creek on this side and out back uh, Boot Hill on the other side. 
The kitchen was staffed largely by Mary Tiffy Mullins, who was a family friend and a domestic who did most of the cooking and lived in the house as well for a number of years. A wonderful cook who knew how to make a raspberry tart from the fresh raspberries that came from the farm. Uh, the work here, the design work, the detailing is really interesting. It's carried out by the pattern that you see well, outside in the atrium looking over, uh, kind of the modernist touch, uh, looks almost like a Pierre Mondrian uh, painting. And it, interestingly, I noticed it was also a feature of the fine arts building as well, a detailing. So that design work of Ernest Johnston found its way here. There's a little cubbyhole and attic up there that you can't see uh, immediately, but there, when the house was uh, finally uh, given over to the Bluegrass Christian Camp, uh, we found a dulcimer hidden in there, a par partially constructed dulcimer that had been hidden away for a number of years. Uh, so bats in the attic and dulcimers in the attic at the Niles house. There was a house standing right there on that rock platform in 1937 though, a tornado came through and destroyed that house. And so all that was really left of the property was that one little rock foundation. Well, that provided a perfect place for Rena to have a porch. And on a hot summer's day, there was no more delightful place to sit and chat with a glass of lemonade or a nice gin and tonic than that porch. And the sound of Boone Creek rushing by it was a lovely place to spend an afternoon. Rena Niles was an extraordinary person in her own right. She grew up in Imperial Russia. Her father was an engineer, a designer of railroads, who had designed a duo decapod, a locomotive, at a very early age and was a full professor in engineering at St. Petersburg. Serena was an extraordinary person in her own right, having grown up in Imperial Russia as a young child. And then in this country, she went to Wellesley, but they figured out she was much too young to attend college. So instead she went to Paris and went to the Sorbonne for several years before she was old enough to come back and finish her college at Wellesley. She was a professional writer when she met John Jacob Niles one New Year's Eve during the Depression, and she fell in love with him, this guy in tie and tails, and his top hat at a rakish angle. So she came to visit with him several months later and asked for a letter of recommendation to help her along with her writing career. And Niles obliged her with a letter, but it was really a terribly misogynistic and insulting letter, but she got the job anyway, and they ended up married. So this was their house together, John Jacob Niles and Rena Niles, where they had two sons, an elder son, Thomas Michael Tolliver Niles, who is a career diplomat, and John Edward Niles, who is a musician and opera director. They lived in this house. The boys lived on the other side of the Gunnison prefab in a bedroom that had been built several years after that. The original building that the Niles lived on when they first moved into the house in 1938 was actually a Gunnison prefab. This was sold to them by Carruthers Coleman who had the magic home company. And what they would do is go to a site, put up a metal, a steel structure, and then just bolt the panels to it. So in a way, it was the predecessor of the double wide trailer that they were living in at first. So this part of the house joined with the Johnson design portion with the dining room, and then the shop, the living room, and the garage at this part of the U of the house. In the middle of that was the atrium, which had garden plantings, and it was a lovely site right in the middle so that they could look out on this beautiful, Escape with the Palisades and Boone Creek rushing by. I want to thank very much the Bluegrass Trust for taking the time to take a look at this place on their detour. 
And just let me mention the John Jacob Niles Center for American Music, which is at the University of Kentucky. The Niles Gallery and the Niles Study Room contain many of the wonderful interior aspects of Boot Hill Farm, the carved tables, the dulcimers, mementos of John Jacob Niles' life and career. Thanks for joining us on this remarkable spring day on this detour at Boot Hill Farm. And here's a little fiddle tune by Estel Bingham of Pineville, Kentucky, a wonderful character with a beard as long as a fountain that flowed over his fiddle. That's old Aunt Jenny with her nightcap on. <laughs> <laughs>